I receive a lot of comments of people asking me how I got my Studio One to look so dark. So I figured instead of answering every person individually, I'd go ahead and create a tutorial showing how I did that, as well as covering the other ways that we can customize the appearance of Studio One. Now this is gonna be for those of you who are new to Studio One, if you've been using it for a while, I'm probably not gonna cover anything that you don't really uh, already know. So just be aware of that. So let's go ahead and just jump right into how I got Studio One to look so dark. I will control comma to bring up the options menu and under the general tab, we can choose appearance. And then here I went to the load preset and under the lighting folder, I chose the darkest hour setting. So if I were to switch this to say the backlight and then to darkest hour, that's what I chose. And then also I did lower the luminance as well as the luminance for the arrange view. And then I clicked on store preset and we can see that that is there. And I actually think I'll update this and take down the luminance a little bit more. And so if we'd like to store our settings, then we can just click on store. I'll call this Quanta one and it should replace the one that I have. Okay. Now, if you'd like to delete a preset that you've made, you can always come to it and right click and then just choose delete. We can also manage our presets within the files. Click on the studio one. We have presets, user presets, color schemes, lighting. Here's my Quanta one. If I right click on that, we can delete rename show and explore, etc. But let's control come and come back to our options. So at the very top, we can adjust our hue, our saturation, luminance, which we've already seen, the contrast, and th this contrast is gonna adjust the contrast of kind of these bordering areas at the top for our arrangement, then we would wanna adjust this here. And then our luminance for the arrangement. Okay, and next we have settings for plugins. And I actually have an effect on one of these tracks. If I open up the inspector, I've got a groove delay. I'll double click to open that up and control comma to come back to the options menu again. So first we've got dark, which is what mine is set to. We also have light and we have colored. So you can make use of these to adjust the appearance of your Studio One plugins. I'm going to cancel and close this effect and close the inspector. Let, I'm gonna double click to add a MIDI part here and then double click and choose the score view. This is gonna be the appearance by default, but within the options menu, our last setting that we have available is changing this to dark. I'll change this back to the piano view. Now we can control the color of our tracks by clicking on the colored border here, just clicking once we open up a color panel. And as I move through this, you can see that it also affects the color of our event that's on that track. So I can select that color and we've updated that. We can independently change the color of our events by right clicking on them, clicking on that color box and then choosing a different color like so. Just keep in mind that after you change the color of your events that are on the track, if you come back to change the color here, then this will not update the events on this track like it did before we made that change to the individual event. If we'd like for our track controls to take on the color that we've chosen here, then we can click on the wrench icon and access the options menu. And then we can click on this first box for colorized track controls. Let's come back and deselect that. Now for our ruler, we can change the time base by right clicking 
and then choosing here, we can choose seconds, samples, and frames. By default, this is going to be set to bars. Now, in the latest release of 5.1, we have the option to add a secondary ruler. So by right-clicking on the ruler, we can choose Open Secondary Ruler. So if we click once on that, then we can see that ruler is added. And by right-clicking, we can then choose the format for that second ruler here. And we have the same options as we just saw for the main ruler. Now, when we open that up, we can also choose the format here. So if we wanted to work with samples, we can just use this drop-down menu. And also we can show and hide this secondary ruler by coming up to the global track visibility button here and uh, choosing here. So I'll click once to hide that. Let's move on to the browser and let's come to the instruments and open up the personas folder. Now, if you're someone who has a ton of VST instruments, you can choose to hide some of them, the ones that you don't use. Maybe you don't necessarily want to install them, but you'd prefer for them not to show up in the browser. We can do that by clicking on the wrench icon and clicking on these white circles. So if I want to hide the Mai Tai and the Mojito, then I can just deselect those circles, click on the wrench icon again, and then those have been removed from view. If we'd like to bring them back, just come to the wrench icon and re-highlight those circles. And then they have been added back. At the top here, we have a favorites list that we can also make use of. So I haven't added any that is expanded out, but you can add favorites, whether it's the uh, stock instruments and plugins or third party. Again, we would click on the wrench icon. There's a star next to here. So if I wanted to favorite the impact and my tie, just click on the star. And let's close out that editing and come back to our favorites folder. And we can see now the impact and my tie are going to be listed in the favorites folder. So if you have a group of eight or nine or 10 instruments that you use all the time, then it could be helpful to put them here. And that way you don't have to search for them within the folders below. But I am going to remove those out. Just deselect the stars and click on the wrench icon again and our folder is once again empty. Now by default, we are going to see thumbnails, but if we'd prefer not to see thumbnails, we can always hide them by clicking on this button here. If you have third party VST that you'd like to add a thumbnail for, then so for the Falcon, UVI Falcon, I'd like to add a thumbnail for this. So I'll drag that into the arrange view and I'm going to select a patch because whatever you see here is exactly what the thumbnail is going to be saved as. So I just kind of want to have something else as a visual representation for this thumbnail. So now we can come up to the very top here, click on that down arrow. And at the very bottom, we have update plugin thumbnail. I'll click on that. Let's close out this window and we can see now I have a thumbnail for the Falcon. Next at the top, we have a button where we can close the switch from the tree view mode. So in tree view, we can click on the arrows to expand these out. I'm sure most of you have seen that or are aware of that, but we can also click on this. And then now here is our personas. If I double click, then we can open like so. Double clicking on the impact, we can see the different kits. Clicking on the left arrow will take us back up. For our instruments, we can actually choose to have the header colorized. And this could be useful for if you have multiple instances of the same instrument and you kind of want them to be better identified by the track color that they're associated with, then we can actually open up the mix console come to the wrench icon in the upper left hand corner. And then we have colorized plugin header. If I select that, then we can see that this takes on the color of our track. Let's close the mix console. And I'm sure everyone knows that we can change the color of the Studio One instruments by repeatedly clicking on the Personas logo. 
For the impact specifically, we can actually change the color of our pads at any time by clicking on this in the upper right hand corner, click once, and then we access a color palette and that's gonna change the color of our pad. If you're using the Atom like I am, then that's gonna update the pad color on it as well. Let's come back to our track options menu and take a look at some other settings in here that are available under the visibility. We've already seen the colorized track controls. We also have show channel numbers in tracks, show event names. This is gonna be on by default. So we can see we have our event names in the upper left corner of our events. If I deselect that, then we can see that those go away. We next have show instrument part envelopes. So by default, this is gonna be turned off. And if I double click on the impact and come to the after touch, I will press three on the QWERTY keyboard to activate the paint tool and just draw in some part automation. And just notice that up above here, we do not see that automation in our MIDI part. But with this setting, when we activate that, we, we can then see the automation line there. It's kind of faint. Let me change the color. We can see that a little bit better. I'll shift E to zoom out and we can see a visual representation of the automation that we have in our lane below. I'll press one, control A and delete to take that automation out. We now just have a, vert a horizontal line uh, going across because we now have removed our automation and we just have our horizontal line there. I'll close out the edit window. And actually I'm gonna leave this checked. We have show track notes. So we can, if we'd like to add notes to the individual tracks, maybe on what type of mic we use or different settings for uh, hardware we may have used, then we can show that. Show chords on events. If we are using the chord track, then we can, and we've detected chords for our events, then those will be shown. And that covers everything in this, in this options menu. Below our transport, we can adjust how this is displayed. Not too much of a change here, but if you're someone that kind of wants to change that, you can align it to the left or to the right or the default center. Let's move on to the mix console. And of course we can detach by clicking on the arrow there and reattach. We have the option of choosing a small or large view. By default, this is gonna be in large and our inserts and sends are at the very top of our channels. If I go into small mode, we then have these buttons where we can expand out the panel to access our inserts and sends there. We also have the option of a normal and narrow view. Below that, we can choose what panels we'd like to see. So if we'd like to see our inputs, then we can select that there our outputs, external devices like our controllers. Our instruments panel is gonna be open by default and this is gonna show all of the VST instruments that are currently loaded in our song. And uh, recently added are these buttons at the bottom to toggle between a compact and extended view. If we click on extended, we can now see the name of our preset that's currently loaded in the VST and, and also a CPU indication. So this is gonna show how much CPU use each instrument is uh, causing to your system. We can open up a scenes panel for creating scenes within our console. And we also can open up a groups panel to manage the, any channels that we have assigned to a group. If we'd like to close our channel list here, then we can click on this button. We have different view options for our meters within the console as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and play back. And so for this channel, by default, when we right click on the meter, we're gonna be in peak, but we can also choose peak with RMS. So the horizontal white lines are gonna show our RMS level. We have can set a different length for the RMS. We have peak and hold, we can activate that. And we can then choose the hold length. We also have pre-fader metering, metering available. I'm gonna take the peak hold off and the peak RMS. We can change our channel color by clicking once down at the bottom 
to access a color palette here. Notice that this, this is going to change the color of our track in the range view as well. If we'd like for our channels to be colorized, then we can come to the wrench icon and under visibility, we can colorize channel strips. And while we're here, we can choose to show input controls. So if I click that, we can see we can now adjust our gain levels and polarity for the channels. We can show or hide our input input output connection. So by default, this is going to be on and we can choose. Well, if we click on an instrument channel, then that's going to open up our instrument. But the bottom one, we can choose our out. So if we had a bus, I'll right click and add a bus channel. So if I'd like to send the one of these impact channels to the bus, we can click and send that to the bus. For our audio, we can choose inputs from our hardware audio interface and also choose whether to send these out on main or a bus or effects channel that we may have added to the console. Okay, coming back to the options menu for the console, we can show VCA connections, group assignments, and channel notes. And these are all things that I've covered in depth in other tutorials for the console. And at this point, I think we've covered pretty much everything about customizing the appearance for Studio One. So if you're new to Studio One, I hope that you found some useful tips here. And actually there's one last thing to cover. So for our impact, let's double click on this part and let's switch to the drum editor. I'm going to double click to add some events in here. We can actually choose the how these events will be colored by coming to the top here. So by default, these are gonna be colored by the part color. So if I right click and change our part color, just notice that the events in the editor are being changed to reflect. But we can also choose to be by patch. So however, the patch is colored. So these are red, these are showing up as red. If we come to the green and add, those are gonna take on the color that the, uh, the pad color within the impact. Now we also have velocity. So now the events are gonna take on the color of our velocity level. So let's come to the velocity tab and make an adjustment here. So once you click off, you can see that. You can see that this changes as I adjust the different velocity level. So you have three different choices for choosing the note color. Now at the bottom, we can also choose a black selection. So when we select, they will be black with a white border. By default, it's going to be, they're going to turn white. And the last one, note controller, I'm actually not sure about this one, so I failed on this last setting. But if you're someone who knows, actually the pad on my Adam is green. So yeah, I'm actually not sure about this one, but if you know, go ahead and leave a comment or below, or I'll look it up in the manual and leave a comment. All right, so that is everything. And uh, again, hope you got something useful out of this and I will see you in the next tutorial.